welcome back to the channel Open Road for Two. Uh, we are continuing our series on featuring different adventure rigs and we are here with our friend Jared who we met through Temecula Overland and we want to feature his badass 96 Disco One. The classic. <laughs> <laughs> We want to get some backstory on this awesome rig that Jared has here. Give us a little bit of the nuts and bolts on where you got it and how it came to be. All right, all right. Um, so growing up as a kid, uh, watching, you know, or not really watching, is reading National Geographic and everything like that. I'm pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> My idea of the adventure off-road rig was a camel trophy, you know, discovery truck. So that was in my head. That's what you, you get. So right. that's what I bought. I bought her about. 12 years ago, and uh, about a year after that, or no, a couple years after that, I had a, uh, when my, my daughter was born, so she got put on hold for about eight years, sat in the, collecting dust. Oh, wow. And then COVID hit, and couldn't do anything else, decided to pull her out of a uh, mothball storage and start working on her again. So When she was sitting, was she running? Yeah, she ran. Okay. I just parked her running never drove her again for about eight years. Oh, wow, yeah. gosh. So, yeah, registration life into it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like literally there wasn't, there's a uh, previous owner had done some stuff like the rear bumper, um, sliders. Um, so that was already done. And then after that, I pretty much pulled everything off and gutted her and put her all back together. Well, overlanding, adventuring, storage is key. Oh yeah. Everybody knows <laughs> that you've got to make the most of space. Um, tell us about the organization that you did back here. There's been quite a few uh, iterations, you know, when you first start out, you kind of like, I need everything, you know, and after a while you start, don't We've need this, there. don't need that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's been slimmed down pretty well, I've got it kind of dialed in pretty good. Um, I had a scrap wood laying around my house, so I built a little shelf platform area to kind of extra storage and stuff like that. Um, like built-in cubbies? Yeah, 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 it was just all simple stuff, you know, just pull everything out open it up, get all your cooking essentials and all that fun stuff that you need. Um, yeah, you got your old school cooler, don't have a fridge, not that fancy yet. <laughs> Can't go wrong with ice, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now it's getting a little hard in the summer, but yeah. yeah. Um, then you, you know, a little fold down table just made, simple stuff, paracord, paracord 550, yeah. um, and then just a piano hinge, and then I just bought a, uh, cutting board off of Amazon and That's cut it to awesome. fit. Well, <laughs> it works good. You can do, Simple, you know? yeah. You just put your little Coleman stove or whatever you got on top of there. And there's propane on the back. Cook that up. Keep some medical back here. Um, it just has just extra little cooking you stick here and stuff like that you need. Right. Kind of keep it simple. Was this already carpeted or No, no. I pulled that, that off. Well. It had the old plastic mm -hmm. vinyl stuff and it was peeling off. Right. Took that off, re, re, did that, with some belt I had laying around. Awesome. Um, Seemed like the, did the headliner, the notorious sag of the disco headliner, did all that at the same time. So here, right here, is that <clears> the an shelf? actual shelf or? Just some old uh, shelving I had laying in the garage as well. Cut it up and just kind of folded it up there and so it would hold. And add some space. I like the handy dandy um, paper towel holder there. Yeah, so paper to towel. Um, and I put my. Uh, of having like a dual battery system i just got the uh not the uh it's a blue yeti mm -hmm. um it's a 500 watt you know portable power station and is that connected with solar on top or how um, do you get your power no it, i do have a solar hookup okay. so i can lay out my solar panels okay. when i need to but I'm, I'm never really in the same spot for too long so right. it's kind of hard um but yeah that or i can plug it into just like you know regular uh, and that keeps you charged up on your trips I yeah mean, what's the longest that you usually are out usually like Longest, maybe like four day trips four and stuff trips like that right now. Pretty good for power that oh, whole yeah. time. Oh yeah, yeah, that awesome. lasts forever. I mean, it's mostly we're just charging up phones and silly stuff like that. Yeah, and you said your daughter sometimes yeah. goes with you, so uh, you got to entertain Jeez. her on trail. I bet sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a big uh, factor. Keep so the iPad keep the iPad up. charged up, so she has something you know, movies to watch at night. Hey, we wanna... love movies at camp oh, night. Yeah. You she know? can crawl up in the tent and do that, and while well, we're down by the fire for a little bit later, you know. So I love how you're sharing adventure and overlanding with your daughter yeah you know? my dad dragged me out everywhere when i was a kid and yeah 
better than being stuck inside and right. you know, playing video games or watching TV all day. Let's get out. And she Passing loves it. it on to the next generation and oh, yeah. giving that appreciation for nature and being outdoors is awesome. Yeah, so. she loves it. I, you know, I'm getting her into photography. Like, I have my camera, and I gave her my old camera. And every week, she's taking pictures there. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's yeah. super cool. Hey, she might have her pictures in National Geographic one day. One day. Know, right? We hope. Very yeah. cool. And I see that you have a dog, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so does your dog go out camping with you regularly or? We take her on shorter trips because she's a handful. Yeah. Uh, she's a 80 pound lab. It's just tons of energy and getting her up and down in and out of the rooftop tent is. We have a 25 pound <laughs> dachshund and we know exactly what you're talking about. Right, yeah. It's just, uh, I mean, she does good at camp and stuff like that, but yeah. on the longer trips, it's just. A lot. It's a lot to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've been like uh, in the back seat there, I built a. Uh, more scrap wood laying around the garage and I uh, just built a little platform. platform for her to sit on so I can actually it's still a three seater technically mm -hmm. so the, her bed takes up the double seat on this side <laughs> they so, like yeah. to spread out too so yeah, this thing uh adventure trail gear from uh, Canada uh -huh. um there's a lot of uh like the aluminum propane mounts you see like on a lot of jeeps and stuff like that but they want like 150 bucks for them or something like that um I got this from these guys for it was like 75 dollars US and it, it's been great. I've had it in, you know, heat of the desert, yeah. the snow, and everything, and it holds up great. And it's just, awesome. Yeah, it's perfect. And it's got the little bag here so you can keep your hose in here and everything. And it's, it's a great product. And I see here, like, you know, everybody has trash a -roo, roo or, yeah. you know, but you got a good old-fashioned sea bag, military yep. sea bag, exactly. and it does the trick. Yeah, and that thing, same thing. It's been on there for a year now. Um, so you know, really Antarago Desert, here. you know, and snow, and it was great. And, it, you know, the trash route, I mean, I picked this for like 15 bucks at a surplus Yeah, this store. is the Army surplus. Yeah, yeah, you know, and versus, I don't know what the trash roots are, they're like 80 bucks or something. Practically. And they, I see people throwing them away all the time because right. they just fade and, and die. that's what I'm saying, this hasn't even faded at yeah, all. Yeah, quality, you know. And, and how did you strap it on? I literally just took the, you know, the shoulder straps, stuffed them. Oh, through the Through, through the hair and just... Zip cinch them up. up and they're held on they're fine I just keep, right now i just keep like firewood and yeah an extra blanket in there but it's brilliant yeah so it's a job <laughs> yeah it's a very uh, low budget build <laughs> well you know that's budget the thing minded. is like you said is when people are getting started you it's don't hard. need everything well, yeah, everybody's like you know? i can't go unless i have this like no it's not right. true just jump in you know grab a Walmart, you know, tent, yep. and sleeping That's bag, what and we get started. out there. We started yeah. with a truck bed tent. Yeah, it was super easy. Um, didn't have the fancy rooftop tents yet no, because no. you couldn't even get one. Yeah, yeah, good luck. <laughs> and the whole point was just getting out and yeah. getting on trail and being. And that's out there. a good way to kind of see like what you actually need. Yeah, you get or out there and like, like it. yeah, yeah, you mm -hmm. don't spend all that money and you're like, this sucks, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Selling yeah. all your stuff on Craigslist after that. Yeah, 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 swoop up those deals, yeah. <laughs> and I heard on your podcast, um, huh? Jared's got an awesome podcast <laughs> called The Average Overlanders. And average. tell us about the setup mount that you did for your recovery boards. Okay, yeah, so these aren't max tracks. Um, these are um, roto tracks, yes, made by, uh, same people make the Rotopax fuel cans, mm -hmm. uh, same company. Uh, they decided to dip into the uh, traction board. Um, they were a hundred bucks at the time for the set, which was a great deal, versus I don't know, what, like 300 bucks for a pair of match, max tracks, mm -hmm. kind of ridiculous. Um, and then they have all the mounting systems, which is like another 50 bucks or something. Um, instead, since I, I made the rack myself, I put a one inch bar going across here and just did some, uh, eye bolts mm -hmm. through that put that bar through there and then just a couple pieces of flat stock I had laying around and just it's tightened not them going down. anywhere no yeah that's, that's, that's snug and tight solid. yeah, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> and it cost me I think maybe 10 bucks versus <laughs> would you say that you're a tinkerer yeah like, yeah you like I, to mess around and, and yeah that's half the fun of it just yeah. building stuff and you know trying to create it and figure out what you can do so and I love they coined a term on their podcast. What do you call it? The Overland Tax? Oh, yeah. Overland Tax is real. <laughs> it, yeah. Anything like, yeah, you could take an average whatever cooking you know utensil and call it the Overland Cooking Utensil and cost you an extra 10 bucks. Right. Yeah, it's and great. Said, I can't justify spending all that extra money on stuff. You know, it's just, I want to get out and adventure. I'd rather spend money on gas getting to these places or on trips versus, right. you know, dumping like 50 grand in your truck. Into your yeah, truck. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, like. I originally, when I bought this truck, I paid $4,000 for the truck, as is. 
Um, and I'd probably put maybe another with like, you know, uh, maintenance and stuff for, you know, new brakes and all that kind of stuff. I maybe got another five or 6,000 into it. So maybe like 10,000 total for the, the pad that she sits, you know, versus some people go out and drop $40,000 on a truck just to start with, you right. know, and then. So what do you more. use for navigation and planning your trips? Yeah. Um, usually, uh, the simplest one I use is Gaia. Um, it's pretty good, you know, gives you a lot of detail and stuff like that in trail and you can kind of map out where you want to go. Um, I just have a little, uh, little tablet, little Samsung Galaxy tablet I have up there, um, and it just plug it in. You can download it, so that way, if you don't have service, it'll still be on there. And, uh, yeah, it's usually the easiest and way. And some of the things, like, if people were looking at maybe getting an older rig and building it up is you don't have the... Yeah, the built-in nav yeah. and all that. Yeah, no, you so, can do it. Even, like, on your phone, you can have, download all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so not to discourage anybody from oh, no. looking at this, because you can do it. No, I mean, literally go get the paper maps. Like, I... But I was like, that's, cool. that's how we used to do it. I still yeah. have a few paper maps in here just in case, you know. Yeah. Always have a backup, right? <laughs> yeah, if I know I'm going to, like, if I'm going to Sedona or wherever, and I know a specific spot I'm going to, grab those maps, throw them in yeah. there just to have them back. I mean, they're Excellent cheap. Advice. You can go to AAA, and AAA will give them to you. I, I have a CB radio, uh, which is really old school. I don't know anybody who uses one anymore, but I still have it in there um, just as a backup. Um, I was using a great tool for people is a uh, Bofang, uh -huh. however you pronounce it, but a uh, little handheld walkie-talkie type oh, yeah, radio. Yes. They're super cheap, like 30 bucks, something like that on Amazon. And I have two of those in here as well, just like if I'm out of the truck or somebody's spotting, you know, they can walk around to mm -hmm. camp with it. And those are great, but you have to charge them. Right. You know, so the hard-mounted uh, ham radio is nice too. Um, you have to have a license to uh, operate them, which is like like 15 bucks or something it's like super easy test anybody can pass it add a uh a wee boost antenna um <clears throat> it's okay <laughs> it's like well, the number one question i always that, get from people say, is, yeah. what's that antenna yeah does it work yes it, it does work sometimes um so if you were you know if you have one bar barely getting anything Put your phone right next to that. You can maybe get a call out if you had to, which is nice. A, a perfect backup. example, we love going to Anza, Borrego too. Uh -huh. And every time we try to find camp, we try to find somewhere we can at least get one bar. Yeah, just get something. Do you yeah. get something out there in Anza? I do. Certain spots. Okay. Yeah, you know, if you're deep down in the, the canyons and stuff like that, you're, you're blocked out. You're not getting anything. But we did have a, a instance. We were out in Anza, Borrego, oh, a group of us. And uh, one of us had, one of my buddies had to get a call out something for his insurance uh -huh. or his house or something they were doing something and he had to have it out that day and he couldn't get a call out and the wee boost was able to he had to sit here like this next to it but he was able to get but that your important call saved out the day. it did it That's did awesome. <laughs> um so i wanted some extra water storage um and don't want to keep it in the truck so i decided to make a out of abs pipe four inch pipe um and you can pressurize it here i use a little bicycle pump and you can pump it up handheld you don't need a lot of pressure and then a little quick release for a garden hose and then you could do all you know all your uh, cooking and cleaning uh, that way or just rinse off after running around the, the dirt and stuff like that before you climb into your tent you want to rinse your feet off or something it holds about three and a half gallons um, a lot of people say oh it's black so it's solar and heats it doesn't get that warm. No. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not super cold but yeah super handy um, it, cost too much. I think the material, I built two of them, one for my truck and one for my buddy's truck, and I think the total was like 150 for both. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. Very cool. And just a cheap awning. <laughs> it gives you shade, keeps you out of the elements when needed. Yep. That's all you need. Right? Budget. Tell us about the snorkel, too. Yeah, snorkel. Um, it's basically a knockoff of the Safari Land one. <coughs> um, it's got it on eBay, 150 bucks. Easy and to install? It's a little nerve-wracking drilling a giant hole in the side of your fender, but it's not too bad actually. Um, it's a tight fit, but it, it came out pretty good. I have maybe three or four hundred dollars in lighting versus one pod one bar, is like three hundred dollars, yeah. and that's like the amber is here, the two side lights, rear light, front light bar, front uh, floods, and front ambers. Or all like 300 bucks, and then I, I just did all the wiring. I'll show you the side. Um, I just put all my switches here, just wired them all up.
being budget minded as well, I went with the uh, Harbor Freight Badlands uh, 12,000 pound winch um, with synthetic rope and everything uh, with coupon. I think it was like $450 <laughs> a wireless remote. Um, it's great just in case. I've never actually had to use it. Um, I keep hoping some of my friends will get stuck so I can maybe pull them out, but haven't had a chance yet. But uh, it's there if you need it, it's just extra peace of mind. So it had uh, an old man emu uh, two inch lift on it originally, but it was pretty sagging and I added all the extra weight. Um, so I, I took everything out, put all new old man emu uh, shocks and struts and new coils. And I got one of the extra heavy duty coils just to keep that extra weight in the rear because it was starting to sag a lot when I originally had it. But uh, yeah, that's been great since. Yeah. And I didn't want to go big. Everybody thought, oh, you should do a four inch lift to get you know, 33s, all this. She's pretty uh, tiny uh, next to a lot of rigs out there. Um, she only has like the two, I think a two or two and a half inch lift. And I had technically 31 inch uh, tires on there. Um, okay. So she's not, she's not really big, but she goes everywhere all these other guys will go. Um, and I went with the Milestar Patagonia's uh, mud trains. They've been pretty solid so far. I grew up, uh, I grew up in San Diego. Um, and there's a big desert scene, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, pre-runner trucks and everything like that. That's kind of where I started out as in like yeah. high school driving pre-runner trucks and all that. Um, and now I'm a little older, I want to go a little slower and I kind of want to go out and as far as I can see stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do is it's more like the overland idea. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to prove how cool I am by going over rocks and bashing my stuff. I want to make sure I can get to point A and point B and point C and then get home yeah. in one piece and not have to worry about it. So I want to try and keep it as reliable as possible. That's why I didn't want to lift it too much more. I wanted to keep it simple. Then you don't have to worry about regearing it, new axles and all that stuff. Right. Like simplicity is possible. Okay. You know? Is there any advice you would give to somebody looking at purchasing and building out an older vehicle for you, overlanding or adventuring? Definitely look at as far as like be a be aware you're going to have to do maintenance. You know, if you're not somebody who's comfortable fixing your, working on your own truck, that might be a problem because there's constantly always repairs and things break, especially on older vehicles. It's just going to happen. So if you're, you know, not somebody who's, you know, very mechanically uh, inclined, then might not be the thing for you. Um, but don't be afraid. A lot of this stuff's simple. And then like, you know, if you're saving a, you know, not spending 40 or $50,000 on a new truck, you're only spending, you know, $10,000 on a truck. You do have some money left over to fix up some of those issues. So yeah. they're great trucks. I mean, you know, it's the reason why they've been around forever. <laughs> yeah. Thanks you guys for tuning in. We thank you again, Jared, for joining us Absolutely. and sharing your badass rig. Um, <laughs> when we saw this at the Overland meetup, I mean, I fell in love with it. I just think it's just so cool. It's got so much character and the fact that you put so much of it of yourself into it makes it even better. Yeah. So appreciate it and we hope to see you out on trail one time or another Absolutely. I'm sure you know we'll have to plan a trip here, so. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so if you guys want to uh, see more of some of the adventures um, you can go on to my Instagram it's a uh, time underscore to the number underscore discover time to discover um, post up some photos sometimes reels I'm not too uh, social media savvy so I try um, and then uh, if you want to check in on our uh, our podcast, uh, The Average Overlanders. Um, we'll uh, discuss some of our mishaps and our adventures as well. <laughs> so we encourage you, if you're new to overlanding or have been an adventurer, come out to these meetups. It's great connecting with other people that share a passion for the outdoors. Um, if you're in the market for a new vehicle or mods, you know, everybody's willing to answer questions and share what's worked for them and you'll get some amazing ideas for your own rig. If you're not yet a subscriber of Open Road for Two, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time, we'll see you on the open road. Bye.